2024 was a great year for new dinosaur species. Between entirely new dinosaurs found and a bunch of exciting advancements in dino taxonomy, we now have at least 47 new species of dinosaur to add to the ever-growing list of species. While many were based on entirely fresh dinosaur finds around the world, some were new dinosaur species reclassified from old discoveries. And that's just as exciting. Imagine having brand new species just sitting in drawers in the Natural History Museum all this time, waiting to be recognized. Well, imagine no longer, as we've got a selection of eight of these new dinosaur species right here for your perusal, including the so-named chicken from hell. But before we get to that, let's begin at the basement level. We begin our list in North America and around the late Cretaceous. On land, that would one day be pocked with Utah prairie dog holes. There lived a reptilian burrowing creature identified as a new species of herbivorous bird-hipped dinosaur, Fauna Herzogai. This semi-fossorial little guy is the first of its genus discovered and identified in 2024 from fossils excavated from Utah's Cedar Mountain Formation since 2013. It represents a growing understanding of just how diverse dinosaur niches could be. And this one would have shared its space with the colossal Triceratops. Being around the size of a dog, this would have been a very good boy and a rare example of a smaller species of dinosaur with intact fossil samples. That's because the bones of larger species stay put a lot better in general, while smaller bones are more easily displaced over time. This has led to a bias in the fossil record in favor of larger species, which makes this discovery even more exciting. Having died in a burrow likely meant that Fona Herzogai was often fossilized in one piece. The skeleton shows fused hips with plenty of muscle attachment surface and suggests very strong biceps muscles too. Perfect for digging out holes for hiding or breeding in. Burrowing dinosaurs have been known about since 2007, but this new species represents a significant piece of the newly formed puzzle. And being an ancestral species of the other known burrowers, it sets a new record for earliest known examples of digging behavior. From the diminutive to the titanic by name at least. We now move to an animal that lived very much above ground. But while this was indeed a titanosaur, it was a positively petite one, prancing around at a measly 10 tons in weight. This six meter dwarf of a titan was still twice as heavy as an elephant. But titanosaurs were the biggest dinosaurs known to our species. In fact, Patago Titan Maiorum was the largest land animal ever at 60 tons and 30 meters long. So the relatively mini monster of Titanomachia gimenezi, discovered in the late Cretaceous sediments of Patagonia, is a fascinating example of the shrinkage of dinosaurs, especially the titanosaurs around this time. It was small enough to have been prey for the monstrous Carnotaurus, a well-known predatory theropod from the same location and likely lasted until the asteroid collision at the end of the Cretaceous period. It's worth noting that the weight estimates for this species have drawn a lot of skepticism from within the community, and the paper detailing its discovery doesn't go into detail about how it was calculated. However, it is also noted that some of the bones in the foot of Titanomachia are quite unusual, which might give us a clue as to the why inferences of its weight were so high compared to similarly sized sauropods. Regardless, there are unique formations in its bone structure that place it at a significant branch between two lines of titanosaur and a reflection of the changing ecosystems that were thought to be in great flux during the end of the Cretaceous. Going back to the other end of the late Cretaceous now, and this time in Africa, around 95 million years ago, yet another terrifying carnivore has been discovered named Tameriraptor margrafi though there was likely nothing tame about it. The newly identified dinosaur lived in what is now Africa during the Cretaceous period, some 95 million years ago. It was a member of the so-called shark-toothed clade of dinosaurs, the largest predators on land during the period, and shared a family with the hump-backed concatenator and the disgustingly large 14-ton killing machine Giganotosaurus. Tamariraptor would have grown up to 12 meters long and had a prominent horn on its nose. This raptor was actually discovered as early as 1914, but there was a pesky little bout of total war brewing at the time, so it got lost in the ruckus for a while. 
1931, it was identified as a Carcharodontosaurid from Africa and given the genus name Carcharodontosaurus by German paleontologist Ernst Stromer, not long before the country embroiled itself in total war for a second time. This time, the specimen didn't survive the British carpet bombings of Munich. But Stromer's records did, as did a cast of the brain case. And from these, the new genus and species emerged in a study completed in 2024 and published in 2025. Yet another late Cretaceous find now, and this time a ceratopsid from Montana. This entirely new genus was found in June 2024 and is one of the largest and most impressive ceratopsids to date, with an estimated mass of around five tons, a length of nearly seven meters and a frill decorated in the largest horns of any known centrosaurine. Named Lociceratops rangiformis, it's named after the mischievous, shape-shifting Norse god who turned into a mare and got himself pregnant. Though that particular factoid probably doesn't have anything to do with the naming of this beast. Unlike many of its relatives, there's no nasal horn on this one, but there is a pair of very intimidating horns, one above each eye. The downward curved horns on the top of its frill were more than likely part of an ornate mating display. But some say that this isn't enough to declare it a new species. But just like the old back and forth between Taurosaurus and Triceratops, some are arguing that the Lociceratops specimen is merely an adult Medusaceratops, or perhaps simply a local variation of one of the species within it. This was thought to be a swamp specialist, and may have diverged from its relatives as a result of the relative isolation of these flooded habitats in what is now the arid badlands of Montana. Speciation can occur quickly when sexually selected traits begin to emerge, so it is possible that multiple species could have arisen in the same location in a matter of hundreds, perhaps even tens of thousands of years. It's said that one day Loki will break out of his bonds and head off to battle with the gods, so perhaps one day we'll find out. The Americas are fantastic places to find dinosaur fossils, but an often overlooked location that can be just as productive is a very dorky little landmass off the coast of southern England. The Isle of Wight was Britain's last bastion of paganism until the King of Wessex went over there and massacred them all for not being Christian enough. But quite a while before that, it was home to a genus of ornithopod dinosaur from the early Cretaceous. Comptonatus, which translates to what sounds like a serial killer's nickname, the Compton Thunderer, was actually dug up in 2013 and is still one of the most complete specimens of the clade found on the island. It wasn't until 2024, though, that the genus was described as it now sits in the Iguanodont clade, making it one of many Iguanodontians from the region, including the namesake Iguanodon. But like its kin, it was probably a marshland intermediary between the early Dryosauridae and the later duck-billed hadrosaurs. It was teeth that identified this clade to begin with, so it's fitting that Comptonatus chasse is also distinguished from other known species from its dentition, as well as some other clearly unusual bone morphologies that set it apart from other species. As far as iguanodonts go, this one was relatively small, weighing around a ton, and was thought to have roamed around in herds. This one would make four known iguanodon species from the Isle of Wight, possibly separated only by a million years or so. On to another Cretaceous titanosaur now, this time a little more deserving of the name, but not by much. Tiamat Valdesi was found in strata from the Middle Cretaceous in northwestern Brazil, and is now thought to represent a basal genus of the group. It was described in a paper from May 2024, but there are suggestions that an osteoderm found in 2018 may be the first fossil evidence of this species. The genus name refers to the mother of dragons from Mesopotamian mythology, and the animal would have been significantly larger than Titanomachia gimenezi, though still pretty small for a titanosaur. This was not a complete fossil by a long shot, but it's enough to potentially answer questions about the early evolutionary path of the titanosaurs as a big player in the later years of sauropod evolution. One curiosity of note is the tail vertebrae, specifically the complex joint surfaces they exhibit, suggesting a long, mobile tail. Could this have been for defence? Defence was, of course, of utmost importance to animals of the size of Tiamat, 
and our next dinosaur is a great example of why that was. Just over 72 million years ago, La Bocania aguiloni, a recently discovered monster predator, was traipsing around over ground that now makes up Coahuila, Mexico. This was not the largest tyrannosaur, but it certainly carried the flag at over six meters in length. By the late Cretaceous, tyrannosaurs had moved away from being smaller, generalist predators to much larger specialists. But with that shift came a much higher state of endemism, characterized by smaller species ranges and higher species diversity. Interestingly enough, that's not how things tend to work with modern day mammals. Large predators like the leopard are some of the most widespread species on the planet. But things worked differently back then, and as such, Labocania aguilonae and its kin weren't very widespread. This frightening beast would have been the dominant predator in the southern part of their island continent, which at the time stretched from Alaska to Mexico. So you'd be safe from it up in the north and only have its highly competitive predators like the Albertosaurians to worry about. We're coming towards the end of the list here and as promised, we're about to discuss the chicken from hell. But before we do, here's a gentle reminder that if you're enjoying these videos, please hit the subscribe button and click like to help others find us. Anzu, discovered in 2014, unfortunately already took the coolest moniker, named after a giant Mesopotamian demon bird that its discovery certainly pointed towards. But it was well deserved, being as it was, a 300 kilograms feathered monstrosity. And that's exactly what researchers thought this dinosaur was when they unearthed bits of this oviraptor skeleton in Hell Creek, South Dakota. But on closer inspection, it turned out to be a different species of oviraptor, perhaps not as hefty as Anzu, but weighing in at a sufficiently upsetting 100 kilograms. The name Ioniophron infernalis is a convoluted mix of Latin and Greek that aims to translate as Pharaoh's dawn chicken from hell. This was, to all intents and purposes, a bird. A toothless beak, wings covered in complex feathers, likely running around eating whatever it could find. At first, the bones were assumed to have come from a juvenile specimen of Anzu, but by cutting into the leg bone, mature growth rings were visible, showing that this example was almost fully grown. And like modern chickens, it's thought to have been an omnivore. But this was one mean chicken. Standing taller than a grown human, it would have represented a yet undiscovered level of oviraptor diversity in the region. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, please check out our video of some prehistoric monsters that preyed on our early ancestors. And we'll see you next time.